Hello there, welcome to the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel. My name is David Postansky and today we are going to have a fun one. Today we are going to concentrate on the console wars. But I don't mean the console wars in terms of PlayStation versus Switch versus Xbox. I don't even mean back in the day of like Super Nintendo versus Mega Drive and stuff like that. I mean a modern console war based on the modern retro consoles. So this is going to be the battle between the Evercade, the Atari VCS, the Amiga A500 Mini. And we're going to also throw into the ring the Intellivision Amico. And yes, I know it's not even out yet, but we're gonna include it in the list because that is what it is going for. Now, if I really wanted to, I could throw some more handheld stuff in to go alongside the Evercade. And I could throw in the Analog Pocket and I could throw in the Playdate but I don't have those, and I know what you're thinking, I don't have an Intellivision Amico, but I figure that let's include that anyway. I might do a later video about the Playdate and the Analog Pocket, and just do a more handheld focused version of this, but for now, let's focus primarily on home consoles, and this is the modern retro console wars. So if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to smash that subscribe button here on the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get into it all. So we're going to do this console wars based on a few different areas, and that will include things like the availability, the hardware, the price, the controllers, innovation and of course the games and then we'll be looking at the long-term prospects of each of our contenders so to begin with let's start things with availability now in terms of the availability of these different machines i am in the uk we'll also look at things as they are available in the us and i may speak a little bit on whether or not these consoles are easily available elsewhere but to be honest i don't really know i'm in the uk i hear a lot about the us so that's where the main focus will be to begin with the evercade now the evercade i should just mention comes in multiple forms and it started off as a handheld console which you could plug into your television and be able to play it on the big screen later they released the evercade vs which is a dedicated home console version of the same concept and soon enough at the time of making this video there will be the evercade exp which is a revised version of the like a like a pro edition of the handheld which will replace it in the marketplace now they the evercade is made in the uk and it's easily available in the uk you can get it from big places like argos or game or amazon i know you can get it in the us at multiple places including amazon as well so it means that it is easily available it's been around for a couple of years and from everything that we can currently see there is no reason to think that it won't continue to be readily available the immediate Amiga A500 Mini, also something made out of the UK, and I know that you can get this in the US. I know that you can get this all over the UK in like in various shops. Uh, you can get it from Amazon, like Smith's Toys had it. That's where I got mine, and and things like this. And it's available now. And they previously did make the Commodore 64 Mini, and I w I've still seen the Commodore 64 Mini now two or three years at least since it originally came out still in shops like game so it's still available and that's a good sign that the a500 mini will continue to be available for at least a little while whether or not we end up getting a maxi version which replaces it um, i do think that the a500 mini has the slight disadvantage in terms of availability because you can't go into the shop and buy new games for the console you just kind of buy the console and that's it and even though you can add more games to it you don't need retail space to be able to facilitate that i do think that there's a chance that, that one won't be as available as long term then there is the atari vcs which isn't available in the uk come on atari you've never made this available in the uk i got one but i bought one from someone on ebay now you can get it in the US and I knew I know you could get it in places like GameStop and then there was this thing a couple of months ago where GameStop was selling all of their Atari VCS stock off 
I don't know if that's a bad sign. I know you can still get the VCS from the Atari VCS website. You might be able to get it from Amazon. You can't get it even from Amazon UK though. So that one, it's not going well in my opinion as a UK based person for the Atari VCS. And last but not least, we have the Intellivision Amico, which as we all know at the point of making this video is still not out. We don't have a release date for it and there's no signs that it definitely ever will come out. So in terms of availability, uh, unfortunately that one is going to lose there. So in terms of what I'm going to rank them as, and we can try to tally up all of the overall scores of these later on, I would say that the Evercade has the best availability, followed by the Amiga A500 Mini because it's available all over the planet. Uh, the Atari VCS, even though I did manage to get one in the UK, I couldn't get it officially from Atari. So I'm going to put them in third place and of course the Intellivision Amico in last place because it's not available anywhere at all. Now, next up, let's have a quick talk about the hardware. Now, I don't know all of the ins and outs about the hardware and I'm going to cover it as a topic here just because it feels like we should. But uh, let's think about this. So the Evercade, it's available in three configurations. The original configuration, like I mentioned, was the handheld. And then they did a slightly, I think ever so slightly beefier version of the Evercade hardware in terms of the Evercade VS. And it does allow you to connect to the internet, whereas the original uh, handheld doesn't. And now the, the new handheld, the EXP, will allow you to connect to the internet. It doesn't allow you to like have an online store, but there may be things like online leaderboards or something that might be becoming available i might be wrong on that i know that you can definitely do like a speed run mode but i don't think there's a way of comparing the speed run times through a leaderboard and that's on the evercade game of the month in terms of the hardware i know you with the evercade vs you can plug in two carts at once and that's a cool feature of it there's also the fact that uh, you can get the updates online, whereas with the original you'd have to connect it to your computer and be able to get the update that way. For the hardware of the, the Atari VCS, I know that I believe it's well, it is a mini PC and you can use it in PC mode, but that take, that takes you to like install Windows or a different operating system to a different to like an external thumb drive or external uh, SSD drive and being able to plug it in that way so it's not something you get out of the box. You can upgrade the RAM and you can upgrade the internal hard drive. And these are cool features. It's got, I believe, eight gigabytes of RAM out of the box and it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card as I understand it because this isn't quite my area of expertise. But uh, it's like a mini PC, and so I believe it means it's the most powerful out of any of the contenders. From what I understand, the Intellivision Amico has two gigabytes of RAM. It does connect to the internet. I don't believe they were going to ever allow online play, but you would be able to get like online high scoreboards, leaderboards, stuff like this. Uh, the Atari VCS, just to mention, uh, does allow you to connect to the internet as well and access like streaming apps and like a download store there's a download store that will be on the amico the amico from what i also understand it's being compared to like a like an android phone from about five years ago so it seems fairly outdated and that's from when they first announced it let alone the fact that it's been delayed several years and then the amiga a500 mini once again a little bit like the original evercade you cannot connect it to the internet to get updates, but you can uh, you can update the firmware just by getting a USB thumb drive, which connects to your computer, get the update, and then plug it into the A500 Mini that way. It's, I don't know overall what the power specs are of the A500 Mini, but I know that this one is pretty much dedicated to working as running Amiga software from the past, so it does have a definite... Uh, ceiling in which they're trying not to achieve anything beyond it so for hardware i'm going to say and this one i kind of wrestle with a little bit and again it's not really my expertise so feel free to put some thoughts in the comments to educate me if if i've said something very silly here but i'm going to give it to the atari uh, vcs just because the atari vcs can be a mini pc if you put on the extra uh, bells and whistles to make it so 
it does have the most uh, RAM and potential for power. Whereas I know that like with the Evercade, it can run stuff up to about the power of the PS1 and probably not go anything beyond that. Whereas the games that are created for the VCS by Atari um, or other companies, we, we also do see them come out on things like the Xbox and the Switch. And even though it doesn't match those necessarily in power, um, it probably can be pushed a lot further than what we've seen it pushed so far. So I'm going to say that I give hardware to Atari. Then I'm going to give it to Evercade just because it's a balanced console. Then I'm going to say the Amiga and then I will say the Intellivision Amico just because from everything we know the hardware isn't quite finished yet and there's a lot of problems. Next up let's talk about the price. Now the prices will always be changing. I got an Amiga A500 Mini for about 110 or £115, pounds, uh, UK money of course. The Evercade, now the original Evercade handheld you could get for about 60 or 70 pounds and it would come with one of the cartridge collections and then the Evercade VS is about 80 or 90 pounds and again it comes with one or two cartridge collections so that's got quite a good low price point. The price of the Intellivision Amico has repeatedly gone up and it still isn't out yet and so the Intellivision Amico I think is currently it's about $300 or just under to be able to order it and you can either get it with one or two controllers but originally they always said it would have two controllers but to try to keep costs lower they're now saying it's only going to come with one. Um, you can pay extra to get the second one but it looks like the price is just continuing to skyrocket on the Intellivision Amico. And then there is the Atari VCS. The Atari VCS price, again there was a fire sale it would seem um, with GameStop where they were selling it at about $100 and other than that I think it's about $300 on the Atari VCS website. So for this one controversially even though the cheapest one is the Evercade I'm going to take everything into consideration here. Now when you buy the Evercade um, you'll get even if you get the VS which comes with I think a couple of controllers or maybe you can get one controller edition you can have up to four controllers in it and each of those are extra expense and that's going to be true with any of these consoles that the extra controllers are extra expense the atari vcs is the most expensive or maybe the amico is just about in the same price range now but when you get the atari vcs you can either get the base model that doesn't come with any controllers or you can get the one that comes with like the modern style controller and the classic controller that we'll be taking a look at presently and it's just it's expensive like if you want to use PC mode you have to buy a lot of extras for it you have to buy the hard drive you need to get a copy of Windows you need to get a keyboard you need to get a mouse and all these things and so for this reason um, taking into consideration extras that you need to buy and games that you need to buy I'm gonna give this to the Amiga the a500 mini just because it comes with 25 games built in and you can add any other past Amiga game to it and even though like they'll say that well in terms of emulation and ROMs you're supposed to have a copy just going by the message boards the message boards just going by Facebook and stuff like this everyone's just adding tons and tons of games and they knew that this would be the case and so basically you buy it once and you have like the full access to the full library of Amiga games whereas like with the Evercade you do have to keep buying the cartridge collections with the Atari it gives you a bunch of games from the Atari vault built in but then you have to keep buying more games from their, from their like online store so I'm going to give this to the Amiga because pretty much once you've got it it comes with a gamepad it comes with a mouse and of course you could get additional gamepads or additional mice if you may need those I don't know um, but pretty much once you've got it you're fairly done so I'll give it first to the Amiga then to the Evercade because otherwise the cartridges for the Evercade are fairly cheap the consoles are fairly cheap except for the EXP is now pushing things up in price and then I would say the Atari and then the Amico in that order in terms of the controllers so the controllers let's start this time with the Atari VCS I have here as you can see the Atari VCS classic controller and I really like this all of these consoles they are like they're modern consoles but they've got a retro theme 
and the fact that the Atari console you can get uh, the old style joystick which also doubles as a paddle has always very impressed me and then you can get for it the modern style controller which I don't actually have and the modern style controller is pretty much identical to the layout and the design of a modern Xbox controller. I can't 100% say what it's like just because I haven't actually got one, but using my best understanding, it's, it's decent. It also gives analog sticks and out of any of the consoles that we're talking about today, it's the only one that has a controller that you can get as a standard controller for the machine that comes with analog sticks and like triggers and stuff like this. So I think that does give it somewhat of an edge or advantage. For the Evercade VS, so the Evercade just basically has the same buttons on it as we're seeing here, if it's the handheld version, but pretty much it's just got like, it's got a quite nice D-pad, it's got the A, B, X, Y buttons, start, select, a menu button, and then on the Evercade EXP and the VS, we have four shoulder buttons. The shape of it, this is a little bit of a unusual controller in that it's reminiscent of several past controllers all at once. When I first look at it, it makes me think of a, of a like original NES controller, but even just like with the slight shaping here and like the fact that it's got the A, B, X, Y buttons instead of just A and B, it makes it a bit more like a Super Nintendo or PlayStation controller. PlayStation controller in particular because it has the L2, R2 buttons. And it's all right, it's serviceable. It's not my favorite controller by a long shot. But the good thing with the Evercade is that you can use a bunch of other controllers with it. Same with a lot of these, in fact, just because I use an Xbox controller with my Atari VCS and it works absolutely fine. When it comes to the Amiga A500 Mini, here we see the controller. It's clearly themed after the original Amiga CD32 controller that got longer prongs pointing upwards, which is always weird. It always feels like the controller should be in your hand this way with the grips going down, but instead the grips go up. They've changed it from the original Amiga CD32 controller in that we have a diamond configuration rather than a square configuration. Um, the D-pad's okay, it's not, not the best feeling, it's not awful by a long shot. And it's got like the home and menu buttons, which just because of the way the software works, it kind of exits you out of the game when you think that you'll be pausing it. But often the buttons are... Uh, mappable you can customize the buttons per game so that's cool there as well the Amiga A500 mini also comes with a classic Amiga style mouse so it doesn't have any like wheel here uh, it isn't a, like a ball on the back like where you'd be cleaning out all of the gunk like you would back in the day on the Amiga um, but it's a pretty decent mouse and it works as you'd expect to with all of the Amiga style games. Then there is the Intellivision Amico controller, which I've never used, and that always will be the disadvantage for this comparison, but I will still compare it because this is just for fun. Now the Intellivision Amico controller is themed after the original Intellivision controller from back in the day, some 40 odd years ago. Instead of having a numerical pad, it's got a screen and it's a touch screen and it's got a disc on it which I don't think it rotates around but you can use it in like multiple directions to simulate as if it was a bit like a paddle. It's got some action buttons on the side and from what we can tell the controller works with a lot of lag so lots of videos that other YouTubers have make have uncovered that there is lag and that there is issues with the Intellivision Amico controller. It should be something which I think they'll be able to resolve if they ever finish off the console. Um, the problem I've got with the Intellivision Amico controller is um, the shape of it. I don't know that it's going to make it like the most comfortable in the hand. Uh, the fact that it's got like this giant circular disc, is that really the best solution for a D-pad? Um, and then the screen, like touch screen stuff, is never as responsive as having a tactile button. And if you're going to use it with the idea that for local co-op or local multiplayer, you've got individual screens, they're trying to do a similar concept to what Nintendo have tried before and never really worked in terms of the, the Wii U gamepad having a screen on it or the GameCube connecting up to Game Boy Advances so you have individual screens in your hand. Now, the advantage that the Amico has is that if everyone has got one of these and all of the controllers are the same, 
um, or at least you know I know you can use uh, mobile phones as controllers but that will still give you the screen experience it means it's not like on the Wii U where you could only use one controller that has a screen on it and then everyone else has different style controllers so having that parity is good and an advantage but the thing that the Wii U has taught us is that second screen gaming didn't really work when you've got a DS or a 3DS and both screens are in your hand they're so close to each other it's like one continuous screen in a vertical orientation when you've got the Wii U in your hands and you're looking here and then you're looking there to your television it's just it's an uncomfortable thing to have to focus on two places at once you can't do it you can't physically look at two things at once so you do have to look back and forth and it just it didn't really work as a concept so in terms of the controller i am going to rank things thusly i'm going to give first place to the atari vcs just because having the modern style controller gives the most options there is the innovation of having the classic style joystick with the paddle built in next up i will give it to the evercade just because the evercade controls always are functionable uh they're always more than achieve what you need to with them then the amiga just because like the splits joy pad isn't the most comfortable i know that they were going for the retro retro aesthetic with the grips pointing upwards but it doesn't really make for a better controller it's cool that they included a mouse but again it's limited by being similar to the mice of the past and they could have just given them modern function and worked out something with a roller wheel and i don't i know it perhaps wouldn't have worked in the games but it would have still if they could have found it even for menus or something that would have been cool and then lastly for the amico just because the concept of it uh doesn't really work that we found out from the wii u that we found out from the um the game boy advance connection to the gamecube and stuff like this second screen gaming didn't take off i know that uh, PlayStation tried it with the Vita connecting to the PS4 and Smart Glass on the Xbox. Second screen gaming didn't work. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not innovative, and we'll get to that in a second, but uh, for this one, I will say the Amico in last place. Speaking of innovation, though, this is the one which I'll say straight away I will give this to the Intellivision Amico because even if it's completely like a failure in, in, in how it actually pans out and the console may or may not ever come out the idea that they've tried to make it so that everyone has a second screen on their controller as standard is an innovation just because like i said if you had the gamecube and you wanted to play pac-man versus or zelda four swords adventures and everyone has to have a separate game boy advance as well as a cable as well as a gamecube as well as the game and the television it, you meant you had to have so much just to get that experience on the Wii U, only one gamepad could connect and everyone else would have Wii remotes and so you'd have asymmetrical gaming but it just meant that you couldn't have everyone with their individual screen. So the fact that the Amico has gone all in on that, I'd say that's an innovative idea. The fact that they've got lights on the controllers and on the console itself is an innovative idea even if in actual practice it's not going to enhance the games terribly much they're trying a few things the fact that they've got like these cards that you scan and then you have the games which transfer with nfts and all that it may all just be bogus stuff i'm completely not convinced by nfts and what happens if like the online store goes away do your cards just become useless and you lose your games but the idea at least in concept is innovative so because this is probably going to be the only category i can give to the intellivision amico i'm going to give it to the amico after that next up i'm going to say that i'm going to give it to the atari vcs just because it's like a retro mini console with built-in games but then they were like well what was if we make it so you can also get a download store and add more retro games to it add some more like modern games to it as well and then if you could get streaming apps and so you can access libraries of lots of different games all on the uh, VCS and if you're not convinced that this console is actually going to do well and you're on the fence about getting it guess what it's also a PC so by adding the external SSD drive then it means that you can use it as a PC so even if the console didn't do super well you still have a mini PC in your hands so next up I'll give it to the Atari then I'll give it to the to the Evercade just because it's the Evercade has a specific thing it's trying to do retro games on cartridges which weirdly is now innovative because 
obviously nothing's going the route of cartridges anymore. They added the ability to connect to the internet and so then you can get game of the month. So that's an innovative idea. Also that you'll be able to get updates over the internet. They may or may not add any kind of high score or leaderboards. They certainly added the speed run modes for the game of the month. Um, and other than that, it's not necessarily super innovative, but the fact that you've got this this one console that can play games that run really well from past consoles like the, the NES, the PlayStation, the Mega Drive, and so on and so forth. I'd say that for what they've aimed for, you know, it is an innovation of itself. Then last up, I will say the Amiga A500 Mini for a similar reason to what I said about the Evercade. It aimed to do one very specific thing and it does that well, but it's not really breaking like tons of new ground. They do make it so that you can update it and the community have made it so you can add tons of old games. You can add Workbench to it, which was like the Amiga operating system. And so in that sense, the fact that people will be able to continue to tinker with it, but that's not the way it works out the box. The potential for innovation is there, but it's it's pretty much set to just to do the thing that it does. But let's talk about the games. Now, the games is the most important thing. Obviously, the controller has to feel good in your hand. Obviously, it's cool if there's something innovative about a new console, but realistically, it's about the game. So which console has the best games? Now, this is a difficult one just because the Evercade has cartridge collections. They come on little cartridges like we can see here. So here we see an Atari collection and the Pico collection and Bitmap Brothers collection I've got over there. And there's probably about 30 or just over 30 collections that are currently out or have already been announced and each of them has between 2 and 20 games on. So there's a couple of cartridges that have... <coughs> so there are a couple of cartridges that just have a couple of games on. Um, something like the Worms Collection has got three games on. Then you get things like the Atari Collection, which has got 20 games on. And then there's like the Interplay Collection, and that might have 10 or 15 games on. And the Bitmap Brothers Collection, which has got about six or seven games on. So they really do vary in what games are, how many games are in each cartridge collection. The limitations of the cartridge collections is that the, the collections go by the developer or the publisher. So the Atari collection has Atari games on it. The Interplay collection has Interplay games on it. And I think because of this reason, the fact that the games only come in collections, even if it's a minimum of two games, I think this has put off some of the bigger publishers, the bigger developers from putting their games onto the Evercade. You would have expected things for a console like this to have like Capcom games where you'd have all the old Street Fighters and Final Fight and stuff like that. Maybe even if they're, if they're doing PS1 era stuff, stuff like the Resident Evil trilogy or Dino Crisis games. But Capcom, at the time of making this video, haven't put their games onto the Evercade. Uh, Square Enix, you could have thought there would be some Final Fantasy games. This would be the perfect console to have these old style games on, but they haven't come. And maybe it's because I can imagine a company like Square Enix looking at the Evercade and being like, well, you can get a cartridge which has got like 10 games on it from um, Codemasters, and you get like Cannon Fodder and Sensible Soccer and God knows what else on there. Or you get the Bitmap Brothers collection, which has got like three speedball games and Chaos Engine and whatever else. And you get the Atari collection, which has got 20 games on it. It's like, so if we just want to put Final Fantasy VI on a cartridge, this isn't going to seem like good value. One game versus 20 games. And also they only sell at about £15 each. So for these reasons, I think we haven't got Sega. We haven't got uh, Konami. We haven't got Capcom. We haven't got Square. And this is a big gap in the library because these are the kind of games which you really would have expected. And it doesn't matter if everyone already owns the Sega games and Sonic the Hedgehog and everyone's got Street Fighter 2 five times over. The fact that they're not available does just give the sense that some of the heavy hitters are missing from the library. Now, in terms of what there is across the different collections, I love the Oliver Twins collection, like with all of the Dizzy games. I love the Atari collections, and there's quite a few Atari collections on here, like Atari Collection 1 and 2, Atari Arcade, 
uh, Atari Lynx, like the handheld collections one and two. So there's a bunch of games from past consoles. We're now going to get the Commodore 64 collection on there, which is going to like the home computers, like the micros and stuff like this. We get arcade ports on there, like I said, the Atari ones. And then we get, what else have we got on there? Like Interplay and Pico, Jaleco and all these other ones. So there's quite a lot of games. You're not going to be starving for games on there. Uh, the Worms Collection and the Gremlin Collection. So if you want like Zool and stuff like this, there are a lot of games on the Evercade. And um, you're never going to be running out of things to do, but there are some of the heavy hitters missing. When it comes next up, let's talk about the Atari VCS. So that comes with the Atari Vault built in, which gives you, I forget how many, maybe it's 50 or maybe it's 100 old Atari games from the arcade and from the Atari 2600. Then you can go onto the App Store and you can buy Atari Vault 2, which gives you a bunch more arcade. 2600, 5200 games. You can then download some Atari 7800 games. There is going to be another collection, which is the Atari 50th Anniversary Collection, and that will have things including Atari Jaguar, Atari Lynx, Atari ST, and hopefully when those games start to come in that collection, they will also make some of those games or other games not in that collection from things like the Jaguar available on the download store. You also then get indie games available to download for... Uh, from the Atari VCS store and there's some interesting ones on there nothing it is again it's feeling like it's lacking some heavy hitters there are some good games but you know you'd like to see things like Shovel Knight on there or just any of these retro style games like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game Shredder's Revenge that would be cool if that came out on any of these consoles but it'd be cool if it came out on the VCS because the VCS will be capable of running it and that would just be something which would feel like a bigger deal if something of that level came out on the VCS but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Instead what we do get is we get some of the, like, the Atari recharged games which are like modern remakes with like neon graphics, simple graphics but cool looking graphics which just recreate and innovate on the old style uh, Atari games like Pong, Black Widow, Centipede, Breakout, stuff like this, uh, Tempest 4000, so there's a bunch of cool games uh, which are like modern updates of the old Atari games. The secret weapon up the sleeve of the Atari VCS is that you can get Xbox uh, Game Pass on there. <coughs> So it means that you can play any of the games which are on Xbox Game Pass and you can play them over the cloud. The downside to that is you need a decent enough internet connection for it to work and to work well. And for me it works well enough but it's by no means perfect, like the graphics do glitch out a little bit. But the games that I've all tr tried on it have all been playable. You then get Stadia which allows you the access to any of the games on Stadia which gives you things that you can't get on Xbox Game Pass and vice versa. Obviously these are extra expenses that you need to pay for these subscriptions but it does mean that if you already have an Xbox and you then got a Atari VCS in a different room or somewhere else then you can access your games on it and, that, and that's a cool feature. Then there is Antstream Arcade where you get a certain amount of currency a day I don't know if this is like this on all platforms that it's available on, but then you can play old games and it gives you access to a ton of games like Pac-Man, to point and click adventures from the past, things like Monkey Island, and a ton of like other beat-em-ups and action games, racing games, all sorts of stuff, even text adventures, which is crazy. Um, so the Atari VCS, the, then the secret secret thing it's got up its sleeve is like I mentioned a bunch of times, you can use it in PC mode. And if you use it in PC mode, it then allows you to have access to anything that you could have on your PC. Almost. Now you can access like Steam or the Epic Games Store on there, and you can access your full library of Steam games, but unless you're upgrading the RAM and upgrading the hard drive in the Atari VCS, 
it's probably going to be limited. For example, I tried to play Resident Evil 3 Remake and it wouldn't even start the game. I didn't even get the option to try to reduce the graphical settings. It just wouldn't load. But then I tried to do something like Jet Set Radio or The Typing of the Dead and they worked fine on the VCS. It does also mean that you can do emulation on the Atari VCS through PC mode, which means that pretty much anything that you'd get on the Amiga A500 Mini or that you would get on the Evercade, then you can access them one way or another on the Atari VCS. But again, the whole idea of the Evercade is that these are officially licensed games, not just games on an emulator, which you get through dodgy means. So in that sense, the Evercade does things legitimately. Next up, the Amiga A500 Mini. It comes with 25 games built in, and they're a mixed bag of which games they are. Things like Worms the Director's Cut, Simon the Sorcerer, Alien Breed 3D, these are cool games. There's some big heavy hitters of the Amiga library which aren't there and that's going to be because of licensing issues. So you don't get Monkey Island, you don't get Lemmings, you don't get like Robocop the game or Robocop the movie or Batman the movie or Bart vs the Space Mutants which were popular games back on the Amiga. But the good news is they know that people want to be able to hack these things and add new games so like people worked out how to do it with the NES Mini or, or the PlayStation Mini to add old games to it from those machines you can add pretty much any Amiga game so as it is built out the box they give you the instructions you plug in a USB thumb drive and you can add a ton of extra games to it and then the community have tinkered with it hacked it which now means that thousands, pretty much anything that was ever released for the Amiga is playable on the A500 Mini, which gives you access to thousands of games. Last up, we get the Intellivision Amico. And this is an interesting one here, just because there's been about 50 or 60 games that have been announced in one form or another for the Intellivision Amico. When you go onto their original reveal trailer, and it says like R-Type and like Burger Time and old Atari games and old Intellivision games, all going to be getting remakes or new versions on the Intellivision Amico. It does add up to quite a lot of games. They also do say that all of the games that on the are on the Amico are going to be console exclusive to the Amico. That's what they said in the past. Recently, when they announced that the Amico was still going to be a thing, they announced that there's going to be certain games that might release on other platforms, but we don't have any information about that yet. So it may be the case that any of the games that come out for the Amico may not be exclusive to the Amico when it's all said and done, but it includes re remakes of old in television games like um, like Snafu and Astro Smash, uh, Night Stalker, I'm trying to remember what else there is, and Shark Shark, and these games, they look, they look good, but they do look like updates of old games from 40 years ago. So, like the Atari Recharged games, kind of keeps the same look and feel of everything from the original games, but gives it brighter, shinier graphics. Uh, that's what the Intellivision Amico games have done as well. It's perhaps less stylized and just more, like modern cartoony they kind of look a bit like well it's going to sound mean but like we wear games where like shark shark kind of just looks like these big cartoony funny graphics and stuff like that but they are meant to be exclusives whether or not we'll get earthworm gym 4 which was announced for it i don't know but it does mean that the games that coming out on the amico unless they're like there's a version of pong or, or breakout and obviously you then get different versions of those same games on the Atari VCS. But pretty much the games that are for the Intellivision Amico won't be available in that exact form or anywhere else. Whereas, like I said, the games that come out on the uh, Atari VCS, they're not exclusive. So the recharged games, Tempest 4000, you can get it on the Switch, you can get it on the Xbox and so on and so forth. The games that are on the Evercade you can get on a bunch of other places and in particular you could get them all pretty much on the Atari VCS through emulation in PC mode. So for this though, this is the difficult one and this was the most important one. I am going to say it's a tie in first place between the Evercade and the Atari VCS. The VCS has some like these modern recharged games, not many of them, but there's a bunch. 
There's big collections, including the Atari Vault and the 50th Anniversary collections. There's the fact that you can get access to Stadia, Antstream Arcade, and Xbox Game Pass, and then anything that you want to uh, throw at it in PC mode just means that there is a, the most potential games you can play on the Atari VCS. In terms of what's specifically designed for the consoles though, that isn't quite the same situation, but you can still play Xbox games, etc., Stadia games on the VCS. But games that are specifically put onto the format of these consoles, um, the Evercade has 350 odd games, which is more than enough. It's plenty of games to be getting on with. I do think it's lacking some of the heavy hitters. Would love to see some Capcom games, some Sega games, Square games. And I think if those, if literally those three collections came out alone, and we had like some Final Fantasies, some Street Fighters, Sonic the Hedgehogs, I think anyone would be able to look at the history of the Evercade and say, yeah. That had you know these heavy hitters and that made for a robust library of games the amiga like i said it comes with 25 games built in and you can potentially have thousands of amiga games on there but they are limited just to the amiga games so it has the least variety just in terms of library in that sense amiga games haven't always been easy to put on stuff even if you were to try and put them on the Atari VCS in PC mode. There's a lot of messing around and configuration that I have found that I had to do with Amiga emulators in the past. So the fact that everything just kind of works on the Amiga A500 Mini, or at least mostly works out the box on the A500 Mini, I'd say that's a big advantage to it. Um, but I'll put that in third place, and I will put the Amico in last place, just because it's not out. We're now hearing that games that were planned for the Amico might eventually come out elsewhere and it's going to have the smallest library of games because even if this thing does come out I don't think we're going to get tons more game announcements. I think they're just going to put out whatever's being worked on and that may be the best we can hope for. So that almost wraps it up. I said that, that was the last category, but let's just look at the long-term prospects very quickly before we give like my final thought. I'm going to say the long-term pr prospects, I'd say it is best for the Evercade because in the lifespan of the Evercade so far, we've seen it go in a sense from strength to strength from the original handheld to getting a home console version to now getting a pro edition of the of the handheld which is the EXP and so they're like refining it and hopefully hopefully Evercade won't have a new version come out soon because I'd feel like that would start to lose like the faith of people having to buy console after console after console too much but maybe in two or three years time I'd be happy to see them do a more powerful version of the Evercade backwards compatible certainly but something where it comes with analog sticks and um, maybe has like improved um, internals so it can run N64, Dreamcast, PS2 that kind of era of gaming I think would be perfect to take the Evercade onto the next the next level. I do think that the Evercade is going to keep going because there's no sign of it slowing down really at this stage. I worry that the Atari VCS will continue to get um, some Atari games but perhaps even once they're past the 50th anniversary which is this year they might start to pull back on Atari VCS support just because we haven't always seen the Flashback Fridays series of games getting released quite as much in recent times and it might be that from Atari's perspective if they were going to do this big push about their 50th anniversary they could hardly say in that 50th anniversary year yeah we're giving up on the Atari VCS so they may be keeping it afloat but how long they keep pushing with it I don't know but that's where it's cool that it does work as a mini PC but again it's not available in the UK yet and until it gets like a true worldwide release I think its long-term prospects are somewhat limited. The Amiga A500 Mini, 
I think that that's going to stick around for a while. We might see different editions. We might get a Maxi version, or if we don't get an A500 Maxi because those things were huge, we may get an A600 like Maxi, which was very compact, or potentially an A1200 Maxi, uh, just for the smaller form factor. And if they put different games on it, then that might be interesting. Obviously, though, they have made it so you can add any games you want. So you realistically don't need to have a different edition just to get a different library of games on it. Um, I did still still see the C64 Mini in-game this year after I got my A500 Mini, which means that they're continuing to restock these things. So hopefully from this company, we'll continue to see the A500 Mini available for a while to come. And then there's the Amico, which I don't think has a bright long-term future. Just because if it does eventually come out, it's going to be cool for the people who have waited for so long. It would be super interesting to see how much support this thing got. Will it, even if it did come out in 2020 as it was originally planned, in 2022 they might still be putting out some of the original 60 odd games that they announced but are new developers going to be continuing to get on board with the Amico? I'd like to be proved wrong on it but I don't see that happening. So that is my analysis in the modern retro console wars between the Intellivision Amico, the Amiga A500 Mini, the Atari VCS and the Evercade series of consoles. Which one won? Which one is the winner? Now, I think that's going to be completely subjective. Obviously, throughout this video, I have given my views. I'd be interested to know what your views are, so put lots of comments in our comment back and we can discuss these. And Maybe I'll make a follow-up video if you guys convince me that I've been completely off the mark with all of what I've said here. But for me, I think... Of all of these, the one which I feel is the most solid in terms of its the experience I get from it now, how well everything works, the, how much I played and enjoyed the games that are out on it. And obviously that, look, this is unfair to the Amico because I haven't got it, but that's part of the point. Um, I would say I'm going to give this to the Evercade. Only just beyond the Atari VCS because I get a lot of use out of that. But um, the fact that it's not easily available over here in the UK, the fact that it's a download store only console, whereas the Evercade, it feels like I can go and get physical cartridges. Um, it feels like it's got a continued presence and they have to keep putting out new things for it. And there have been a bunch of releases for the Evercade and new editions of the console. It feels like it's going from strength to strength. For that, for that reason, I will give it to the Evercade. Uh, the Atari VCS is so versatile, so if you have the opportunity to get one, the fact that you can play Xbox games and go into PC mode and get the Atari Vault and it works like a classic console, and then if you want to, you can stream Disney Plus on it, it's very good as well. Uh, the Amiga A500 Mini, it feels a bit like it's lost in the shuffle of these other things. It's excellent. It, it only does what it sets out to do, so in that sense, it can't really compete uh, truly with something like the Atari VCS or Evercade, but the fact that it's not, it is more than just a mini console in that you can add more games to it, so you can add thousands of extra games to it. And Pete, I've seen people are already trying to work out, well, how can we put an emulator of the NES on the Amiga and then have the Amiga hardware running the NES or Mega Drive and stuff like this. I'm sure there's going to be lots of exciting things come from like the community around the A500 Mini, which is exciting as well. But for me, I am going to make the definite decision that I give this battle, this geek battle, to the Evercade, uh, followed closely by the VCS, then the Amiga A500 Mini, and the Intellivision Amico in last place. And with that one, I will say the footnote again of hopefully they'll get it out there and prove everyone wrong. And then this will be really exciting to look at. Maybe some point in the future, even if it's in a year's time or two years time and do a round two of this.
So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed just sitting here rambling on about all of these consoles and trying to work out which one I prefer. Give us lots of comments and we'll chat in the chat. Um, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. This is the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel. I also have all of these YouTube channels. So the Extreme Improv channel is where we do improv comedy if, you, if that's your type of thing. The Geek Battle one, we talk about a range of geeky stuff. Slam Jam Wrestling, guess what we talk about on there? Wrestling stuff. And the Jet Lags and Loving It is a travel channel. Check out any of that content if that sounds like it's your bag. That would be awesome because I'm trying to grow all these channels. But anyway, I will wrap things there. So until next time, stay safe. Always stay extreme. And ciao for now. Boom. And we're off the air.